Hi guys, I'm Shada and today I have another PicMonkey tutorial to share with you. PicMonkey is an in-browser software that's really easy to use and today we're going to use it to airbrush a picture of ourselves. So much simpler than using Photoshop. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so this is the image that I'm going to be working with today, just a photo of myself. And I've got the image sitting on the desktop there. And then, of course, PicMonkey is the tool we're going to use. It's an in-browser software, so you just go to PicMonkey.com. And this is the site. Now, I'll just say a few words about PicMonkey. You're going to want to get an account. It's no longer free to use, but it's only uh, $40, $40 US per year or $4.99 a month. So it's a really good price um, and if you're doing a lot of online stuff and you don't want to get all the Adobe programs or you don't want to learn all the Adobe programs, then PicMonkey is such a good bet. It has all these different features for editing photos, touching up photos, doing designs, um, doing collages and they also have a lot of great info, um, good tutorials, good inspirational stuff. You know, they'll walk you through in these blog tutorials how to make a Pinterest image or how to collage um, images for your blog, really current stuff. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you through all the touch-up tools. So we're doing a little airbrushing. So I'm just opening my image here and the first thing I'm going to do is a crop. This is going to be a YouTube thumbnail, so the size for that is 1080 by 720 and that's width by height um, so that way I know that this thumbnail will be the perfect size for use on YouTube so I'll do that by putting in my numbers clicking scale and clicking apply um, and there we go that's perfectly sized for use on my YouTube channel basically now I just want to walk you through all the, the touch-up stuff so over here on the left is the all the different menus the little face there that opens up the touch-up menu and the first thing I want to do is show you how to airbrush and this just makes your skin look so much better um, and I always start by zooming in I just want to sort of see on screen the part of the image that I'm going to be working with and of course for touch-up that's my face um, so let's go to the airbrush menu once you click it it'll open and then you have a couple different um, options and the first is brush size and you just want to scroll that bar um, until you can kind of see okay that's the right size since I'm zoomed in the brush size is going to be set really big but I'm just going to make it a little smaller and then I just uh, start I click the mouse and start uh, going around I sort of go in a circular motion to get a nice natural look and you know honestly the program does so much of this for you it's gonna find where your skin is and it's gonna it's gonna do the trick so um, say later when we're applying lipstick you'll see it won't really go too far off of your lips it, it's you do have to be careful but it sort of finds the facial features that you are working with um, so I'm just sort of airbrushing all over I might change the brush size a little um, for different parts of my face and then once I'm happy with it I just click apply next thing on the menu here is the wrinkle remover and I have a little line below my eye there so I'm just gonna make the brush size really really tiny and um, by going over that with the mouse it just sort of blurs it out a little bit I still have a bit of a dark circle there but I don't want the photo to look too unnatural so I'm just gonna leave that the blush palette is really cool. You can actually add all your own makeup. I love adding makeup in post, um, so I don't have to bother with too much makeup when I'm taking the photo. For makeup, it's really good to use that fade slider and make sure that your um, that your color is actually quite translucent or quite faded, and that will give you a really nice makeup look. So you can see there, the blush isn't gonna go off of my cheek. These tools are super user friendly and easy to use. Okay, next I am going to do a little teeth whitening. A lot of these are the same idea. You just want to be zoomed in. You want to get the brush size exactly right. And then you want to decide how much fade you want. So for blush, you might have the color quite transparent. And then for teeth whitening, you're not going to fade it at all because you want, you know, you want white, white. And that's what I'm doing there. And then when you're done, you always just click apply. And we'll do a little lip tint. Lip tint is probably the most finicky. You just want to get the brush size just right. You want to get the intensity right and the color. 
and then you need to with this one you need to be careful because you're gonna see it if you go off of your lip um, so you just do it slowly and carefully and use a nice faded color so that it doesn't look too too crazy you'll see if I up the intensity it's just like really really bright so just keep it nice and faded for a natural look um, not that your makeup needs to be natural but that you want the editing <laughs> to look natural and if you make a little mistake when you're in the lip tint or any of these menus just click cancel um, your last move will be erased and you can just go back into the menu and try again now let's try the eye tint. This is a really great option if you want to make a YouTube thumbnail or something that really pops. You know, you can change the color of your eyes and it can look actually quite natural. The key is getting that brush size the right size. So you just want to make it not too big, not too small. It has to be just about the size of, of the iris of your eye. And um, you want to, again, use that fade slider so that the color is not too dark. And then you're just going to have to play around here with the um, with the color menu and just try to get find that ex that color that's not too crazy but that's different than your own. So I'm kind of using a teal that's quite faded, and you'll see I'll put it there. It's just maybe not quite in the right spot, but when I do get it right in the middle of the iris, it, it looks quite cool. So this is one that you're just going to want to play with, and if you get just the right color of violet with just the right fade and the right size. Or or whatever color you want it can look pretty pretty interesting and it can make for a very catchy um, headshot or um, YouTube thumbnail something that'll really draw your audience in if you're using this for social media next I'll use the mascara tool to go in and just add some dark uh, dotting along my lash line and I just darken it ever so slightly you could also use the eyeliner tool for this or you could zoom in and actually add some lashes totally up to you play around with these tools and just see what works best for the image that you're working on okay the last tool that I'm going to show you is one of my favorites it's the highlights tool for your hair you can grab any color because my hair is quite light I'm gonna go for a very very light pink and you just want to get the brush size right get the fade just right and that's gonna help this look really natural and you can see sometimes this works really well sometimes it doesn't this pink actually I love how that looks and I often will just sort of do across my bang and I think that gives me quite a natural look so yeah I think I'm gonna keep that it just looks like I have a little pink tone on the front of my hair there which I love so um, let's zoom out and that's the whole airbrush look I'm really happy with that image I've been able to do most of my makeup in post edit you could also add eyeshadows and all kinds of stuff so it just depends on what your look is you can really play around and create a really interesting intriguing headshot or YouTube thumbnail or blog a headshot whatever you're Need, in need of. Now I'm going to add some text to this video thumbnail and PicMonkey also has a really easy to use text editor and all these different fonts. If you want more info about this sort of stuff, because I'm just speeding through it here, I do have another PicMonkey tutorial that goes through some more of the basic features and I'll link that in the description below. I'm also going to put a link below where you can purchase PicMonkey for the month or the year. Now this video is not sponsored by PicMonkey. I'm sharing this with you because as someone who's had a really slow learning curve when it comes to Adobe, Photoshop, and Illustrator, PicMonkey has saved me when it comes to being a blogger and YouTuber. I can do all my collaging and photo editing on here and it's super fast and easy. So while the video is not sponsored, it does help me out and it's a way that you can help support me if you purchase your PicMonkey through the link below so it's sort of a win-win so check this video description for a link that will take you to another full PicMonkey tutorial it's a video that I did I think last winter and also check the video description for the link where you can purchase PicMonkey and that will help support the channel so if you want to purchase PicMonkey and support Shada Campbell YouTube then just follow the link in the description box now when it comes to saving your photo you have two choices click either save or export export will get the photo onto your computer so you can use it on other devices or do whatever with it saving will save it on the PicMonkey platform that you can so that you can come back and work on it later well thank you so much for watching today guys I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and if you did please hit that subscribe button hit the like button and I will see you next week with a new tutorial thanks for watching